One of RuneScape's best-selling points is the sheer amount of content in the game. With over 20 years of updates, with new content releasing weekly at its peak, you'd have to be some sort of RuneScape genius to know every part of it. Not even the developers could ever hope to do that. It's no wonder that, despite their best efforts, sometimes things get overlooked. Sometimes things slip through. December 9th, 2008. Jagex release a brand new achievement diary for the Fremenic province, and the players are loving it. I mean, people don't really care about the tasks, but the rewards? Now those are juicy. Fashionable boots. Useful teleports. One of the least useful agility shortcuts in the game. And a niche little feature involving one of RuneScape's least used items. When training construction, instead of building furniture in your house, you can make flat packs instead. It's slightly slower experience, but less click intensive. And you can go and sell them to other players so they can put that furniture in their house without needing the levels for it themselves. Given construction is one of the most expensive skills in the game to train, with only 940 people having 99 on the fateful day of December 9th, a whole two and a half years after its release, flat packs are a godsend to anyone who wants the best furniture in their house. And it's not just the ones with utility, like everything in the costume room. It's anything that looks cool enough. After all, this is the era of house parties, so having a cool house meant that you were the coolest dude around. And totally not just some loser wasting their time in an online game. Problem is, a player is only ever going to need one flatback per furniture spot, if they ever even use one. So supply completely destroys demand and most flatpacks end up being basically worthless. Emphasis on most, we'll be coming back to that. Now, if you finished all the tasks in the Fremenic Hard Diary, you could now sell your flat packs to Advisor Grimm instead of the Grand Exchange, and he'd pay you the average GE value for you, which is more than anyone else would pay. Awesome, an item sync. What a healthy addition to the game. They weren't worth alking since they had such a low alk value, and no one bought most of them, so this update finally gave them a purpose in life. I wish I had one of those. Okay, so it's a will miss it video, so you know that something is about to go wrong. <laughs> well, remember when I said that most flat packs were worthless? Flat packs for those high level items were the exception. Players didn't care about furniture they could easily build themselves, but for items requiring high construction levels, it was easier to buy the flat pack and max out your house than it was to grind your way there. And the flat pack king was the magic cape rack an item requiring 99 construction, and one which let you hang as many capes in your house as you wanted. Remember how there were only 940 players with the skill cape around this time? That meant only a few players could make this flat pack that everyone wanted. And on top of that, magic cape racks required a magic stone, a construction item that was only sold in a single shop and wasn't available anywhere else. This stone cost 975k from the store, or 918k on the GE, because some people like selling items at a 57k loss, apparently. So these cape racks weren't cheap. In fact, thanks to the GE restrictions, you couldn't find a cape rack for less than 1 million gold. So 975k to make, 1 million on the GE, and Grimm will always buy flat packs at the GE price, no questions asked. Now, I'm not good at math, but that's a profit, right? There's a bottleneck though. The Keldergrim store only sells 30 at a time. And this was before the personalized shops update in 2009. So that was a stock of 30 for the entire world. Once someone bought them, that was it for everyone on that world. But assuming you got there first, that'd be 30,000 construction XP and a tidy profit of 750,000 coins. Now I know what you're thinking. A handful of people could make a 750k profit off an update? <laughs> Are you out of video ideas already? But keep in mind we're talking about 2008 here. A blue party hat was only 343 million gold at a time, and not the how many times over max cash it is now. So if you consider inflation and the fact that you could hop to any of the 87 member roles to get another batch in, this actually was pretty game-breaking. Not to mention, since all the magic cape racks were being fed to Advisor Grimm, none were being used to feed demand. 
That meant that this was a safe moneymaker, with so many people eager to buy cape racks and no sane person selling them, the price was never going to go down. If it was going to go in any direction, the price was going to go up. It was a gold mine that was here to stay. Now the thing is, you had to be pretty rich to have 99 construction, so none of the 940 players who had access to this really needed the spare cash. But if there's one thing I've learned about rich people, it's that they always want more money. It was mayhem in the construction high scores. After all, once you hit 99, there was no reason to keep training construction anymore. It was a huge money sink, and as a very click intensive skill, no one found it fun. Except the one guy in the comments who'll claim the 10 hours they spent clicking non-stop on the same few pixels was the best part of their childhood. <laughs> you know who you are. Anyway, this meant that once you hit the threshold to 99, pretty much everyone stopped training it completely. Unless you were the construction queen herself, or one of the other madmen trying to go to 200 mil. A couple thousand experience at most would separate the ranks. So that 30k experience per batch of cape racks was zooming people up the high scores. One player described that it had taken several months for him to fall from rank 40 to 42. But with the release of this new update, he nearly halved his rank to 78 in just a few days. This moneymaker was also the kick some people needed to push up to 99, with 79 new faces joining the pre-existing 940 in the same time span. Although some of these weren't just people rushing to make cape racks. Other high-level flatpacks, which also required expensive shop-only construction materials, such as gold leaf and marble, could make a tidy profit. Not as much as cape racks, but still enough to be worth doing, since enough runs could bring in 7-digit profits. And since you also got XP for doing this, those levels shot up, and soon you'd be among the chosen few able to make the cape racks. So, our maxed moneymakers would hop from world to world and clean out all the stores for any magic stones they could find. Some people would just stock up on magic stones regardless, wanting to build up their supply even if they weren't going to cash in on it until a later date. Some people even went as far as to use alts to keep an eye on the worlds, so they could buy more stones the moment the stock started to come back. And so the cycle of buying, building, selling and repeating began. And there wasn't much people could do about it. With the removal of free trade, it's not like scalpers could try hoarding the stones, since they'd get a minimal profit at best and be stuck with millions in stones they can't use at worst. So the players who couldn't cash in on it just had to stand back and watch it happen. The cape rack sellers were making bank. With that much cash, you could have everything you ever wanted. All the party hats, the best weapons and armor in the game and a spare for your RuneScape girlfriend. A subscription to the Will Miss It YouTube channel. What more could you ask for? Well, the fact that no one seems to be doing this today should be enough indication that the bubble eventually burst. And sure enough, on December 12th, just three days after the update was released, a player heads over to Grimm to cash in three cape racks and only receives back 2.2 million instead of the 3 million he was owed. That's not a GE price. That's not even enough to cover the materials. Has Grimm started scamming people? Sure enough, reports start flying in across all the fan sites about the grim news. As people try other flat packs hoping to find a new moneymaker, they find cuts to all his offers, as much as 90% in some cases, only offering 10% of the GE value. There's an air of unease in the community. Sure, this means the moneymaker is dead, if it's true. But how do we know this isn't some scheme to make everyone else stop buying magic stones so one guy can get all the flatback profits to himself? As tension builds on both the official and on fanside forums, community manager mod Mark H breaks the silence late in the afternoon on December 12th, saying yeah, it's been changed. This was clearly an oversight, and a big thank you to the sensible players who reported it as a bug when they realized it looked too good to be true. They wanted to fix the issue as quickly as possible, and given the numbers of players now stuck with magic stones or unsold flatpacks, the final loss of money would be punishment enough, so no further action was needed against the abusers. Seems fair, right? It was a money-making exploit, and the people abusing it lost a lot of money by the unexpected hotfix, so they can get away without any temporary bans or rollbacks. It's the best solution for everybody. Anyway, the players are furious. 
People like Omustardo, better known as Castle Wars, post long rants on the official forums about how many millions they've lost due to this change. All the players who had been cashing in on the flat packs are deeply upset that they've lost money over the exploit being fixed. The worst is from players who had mass bought stones without even making them into cape racks, who've lost significant amounts of wealth despite not even abusing the exploit. Magic cape racks are panic sold on the GE for as low as they'll go, letting players finally start getting them for their houses again. Now, we've shown time and time again that riots almost never work in RuneScape. But for some reason, Jackex actually backed down on this one, even if it only was a little bit. Probably afraid of upsetting some of their most dedicated players. A week later, on December 19th, they say, fine, you get better Grim prices for one week. Just one, and then it's fixed. And so, Grim temporarily started to buy flat packs for the GE value of the materials used to make it. This was still much less than what it was buying them for before. <laughs> Thanks, weirdos who bought magic stones to sell them at a 50k loss. But it meant that most of the abusers didn't lose too much from the fix. Over the following weeks, flat packs outpaced demand on the Grand Exchange and sent the price of the items on a downward spiral. The magic cape rack alone went from a million gold to 841k by March, a slow decline due to how the GE worked in the era of free trade removal, but undoubtedly a strong sign of the item's fall from grace. I just wonder what Advisor Grimm did with all the cape racks he bought. Thank you all so much for watching! I hadn't heard about this story until a viewer sent it to me a short while ago, so big thanks to them. I really like these weird small stories that only affected a handful of people, like the 1000 or so people with 99 construction who were actually able to take part in this. Sure, the big bombastic tales are fun too, but it's the small things like this that we need to chronicle before everyone forgets about them. You know, like chronicle itself. I hope you're enjoying these stories as much as I'm enjoying telling them, and thanks again for telling me about this amethyst gem. This one's for you. Anyway, my name is Will Missit, and I'll see you all the later.